All right, this is the Algebra 1 review for, fi for the final exam. This is part 1. I'm going to go ahead and start with number 1. Number 1 says, which one represents a function? So if you think about what a function is, remember that every x should have its own y. And if you have repeated x's, then it is not considered a function. So if you look at answer A, this is what we called a mapping. You can write it right here on the top. This is a mapping. And they've put some points on this mapping. And the way that uh, you need to understand is that these are your x values for your points, and these would be considered the y values. So if you look at the very first number, which is 2, it is paired with a 4, but it is also paired with a 6. So this would not be considered a function. So this is no, not a function. It has repeated x's right there. Let's look at B. If you look at B, you'll see that there are two points on this vertical line right here. So again, both of these points would have the same x. Think about it. This coordinates here would be 1, 1. And the coordinates of this point would be 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 4. So notice that, again, you have repeated x values. So it did not pass the vertical line test. So again, this is no. And we're looking for the one that is. Which one represents a function? So now let's look at answer C. Notice that here, these would be your x's. The points are being represented as ordered pairs. So that's your x value. The second number is your y value. So if you look at all your x values only, then you'll notice that, yes, we do have repeated x values right here and right here. You have two negative twos. So again, this is a no, not a function. So then the answer must be D, but let's take a look at the X values. These are your X values. You have a 4, you have an 8, 9, and a 6. I don't see any numbers that repeat more than once. So therefore, yes, this is a function. And so the correct answer for this problem would be D. Okay, so again, which one represents a function? You might want to put right here, cannot have repeated x's. All right, so let's move along to question number two next. This is what is the solution to the system of equations? So they want the solution to the system of equations. System basically means that you have uh, two or more equations in the problem. So notice you do have two equations here. Both of those will make a picture of a line. And so the solution, when you graph this, it could have one solution, which means the two lines will intersect. And so where they intersect would be the solution. So that point right there where they cross would be uh, the solution. And this would be considered to have only one solution they only intersect one time. Now sometimes you'll graph these two equations and you'll see two lines that are parallel to each other. Okay, well in this case they did not intersect, they will never intersect, so therefore this would have no solution. And then you might graph and end up having the same line overlap each other. So you graph this one, gives you a picture of this line, graph this one, it gives you a picture of the same line. We consider that to be overlapping lines, fancy word called coinciding lines, and since they do overlap, that means they intersect infinitely, and so there are infinite solutions. So those are your three possibilities when it comes to system of equations. Well, let's graph them and see. So I'm going to use the graph app. I do need to use relations because notice that the equation does not start with a y equals or f of x equals. Let me go back here. It starts with x plus y equals 4. So x plus y equals 4. 
There's your picture of your first line. I also want to graph the second one, x minus y equals 0. So I'm going to hit the tab key, type in x minus y equals 0. Notice that these two lines do cross each other, so therefore the answer is going to be one solution, but we need to find out what that coordinate point is. So we can use menu, go to 6, and go to number 4. Menu 6, 4 will help you find that intersection point. So there's your answer right there. This is the solution to this system is at 2, 2. So let's look at our answer choices. Right here is 2, 2. In other words, if I plug in a 2 for the x, and I plug in a 2 for the y, it will make the first equation true, and it will make the second equation true. So think about it. 2 plus 2 does equal 2, 4. 2 minus 2 does equal 2, 0. And that's what you're looking for, what x and y they have in common. All right. Now, some of you might think or might say, hey, you can use also menu 32, and that is correct. I prefer to show my students the graph app, but you might also, they can use the first app and use Menu 3, 2, and it even says Solve System of Linear Equations. And they would type in how many equations they have, what variables are in those equations, and literally just type it in here. So x plus y equals 4, and then the other equation was x minus y equals 0, and there's your answer. Okay? All right. Let's go to question number three next. Question number three says, which expression is equivalent to 9x squared plus 15x plus 4? So the keywords being expression and the word equivalent. So in other words, what they did was they factored this expression to get these answer choices here. These are your factors. Now, some of you might remember the tic-tac-toe method. Uh, some of you may not. Tic-tac-toe method is pretty fun to do. Um, you literally just draw like a tic-tac-toe. And you put the first term on the bottom left. You put the middle term all the way to the right. And then you put your last term in the middle. And so what you're doing is you're looking for factors. So factors mean like two numbers or two variables that when you multiply will give you 9x squared. So you might want to start with, say, 9x and 1x. Here, same thing. You want two numbers that will multiply to give you 4. Well, I can try 2 times 2. And then to fill in these two boxes, you multiply across. So you multiply this factor with that factor. 9 times 2 is 18x. 1x times 2 is 2x. What you're looking for, though, is that these two add up to this answer right here. And as you can see, 18x plus 2x is not 15x. So therefore, your factors are incorrect. So what you can do is go back and maybe switch these two, but since it's the same number, there's no point in switching them. And so what I want to do next is try maybe 4 and 1. So I'm going to erase them. I'm going to keep trying to find the correct factor. So I'm going to use a, a 1 and a 4. 9x times 1 is 9x. 1x times 4 is 4x. Well, again, I'm going to look at these two and see if they add up. 15 and they do not. 9 plus 4 is 13. So I could switch these two, put the 4 on top or the 1 on bottom, but that's not going to work either because that's going to give me 36 and 1, which is 37. So my next choice would be to go back to the beginning and use a different factor for the first column. So instead of using 9x plus 1x, I can use 3x and 3x, because that also will give me 9x squared. And then here, what I can do is try using a 1 and a 4. So that will give me, what, 3x in this box. 3 times 4 is 12x, and there you go. 3x plus 12x is 15x. 
So these are your factors, 3x plus 4 and 3x plus 1. And so 3x plus 4 would be the first factor and 3x plus 1. Which gives us, looks like, see, they just have them backwards. They have this one first, and then they have the 3x plus 4 second. So there you go. Correct answer would be C. Now, another way you could work this out is by using the define. Remember, 3, 5, 7, 9, use these numbers for define. And so you could go to the first app. Then I'm going to go ahead and clear everything out. And I'm going to go to menu 1, 1, which is your define option. And I'm going to define x as equal to 3. And then what you would want to do next is type this in to see what number it would give us when it plugs in a 3 for the x. So 9x squared plus 15x plus 4. So when you plug in a 3 here and here, it gives you 130. So the question is, which one of these would give you 130? And I'm going to go ahead and put the answer to see if that one would give us 130. I may, might need to put a multiplication symbol between these two parentheses. So I'm going to go ahead and do it now. And there you go. So you're looking for the equivalent expressions. Notice that when we plug in a 3 for the x's, both of those give us the same answer, which means they're equivalent. So again, that's another way that you can work this one out. Of course, you always want to choose both so that you can work it out tic-tac-toe method and then double check using define. Now number four wants to know what is the vertex for the quadratic function. So vertex, got to think. We got, when it comes to quadratics, there's two types of vertex. You have your minimum vertex, which is a quadratic that looks like a U, and it's got this low point in it, which we consider to ha have a minimum vertex. Or you might have a quadratic that's an upside down U, and now instead of a minimum, you have a maximum vertex. So what we're going to have to do is graph to see what type it is, and then we can use either menu 6, 2 if it's a minimum vertex, and menu 6, 3 if it's a maximum. Okay, so we've got to figure out first of all what it's going to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and graph that using the graph app. I don't have to use uh, relations. I'm going to go ahead and type it here. So it's x minus 6, parentheses, x minus 6. Now I might need a multiplication symbol right here between the two sets of parentheses. And go ahead and put it now. Press Enter. So as you can see, here is our quadratic. It looks like a U. So this definitely has a minimum vertex down here at the bottom. It looks like it's at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right there. So I'm going to go ahead and use menu 6, 2, because I know it's a minimum. And I'm going to see if I'm right. There you go. Right at 6, 0 is your minimum vertex. So I'm going to look for my answer here. My answer choice then would, that I would go with would be C. Now other teachers might show you menu 5, 1, because that is the trace option. And again, you would have to go scroll down until you get to the x-axis because that's where you will find the vertex on this particular, on this particular uh, quadratic. The lowest point is on the x-axis, which is where I found my minimum vertex. So it actually is your x-intercept, which is also called a zero root or solution, but it's also your minimum vertex in this problem. So either way will work. Okay. All right, so let's look at question number five next. It says, what are the solutions of y equals x times x plus 3? So solution, you got to remember that, first of all, let's graph this because I want to see if it's a quadratic. If it's a quadratic, then a solution of a quadratic would be where it crosses the x-axis, which is also called a zero and a root. 
got number Xerox. Now here it's saying it cannot accept this. Really what I'm missing is probably that multiplication symbol right here between this x and this set of parentheses because it should be x times x minus 3, so it's having trouble with that. There we go. So solution, it is a quadratic, and so yes, solution would mean where it crosses the x-axis. So these, it's crossing at 0 and it's crossing at 3. You can find those by using menu 6, 1, or even 5, 1, if you use the trace option. I'm going to go with 6, 1. It's one of the names of solutions, called a 0. That's what the calculator calls it. And so those are my two solutions for this quadratic, 0, 0, and 3, 0. Okay. I'm going to look at my answer choices. Now, instead of writing them as coordinates, it looks like they're just using this number right here, which is 0, and this number here, which is 3. And so if you look at your answer choices, we're looking for B. One is at 0, and the other one it happens to be at 3. And that would be my solution. Now, question number six. The mapping below represents all of the points on the graph of function f. So these are points. Again, this is a mapping. What is the domain of f? So remember that domain. If you think of middle school, I'm sure some of you remember your teachers explaining that. If you draw a t-chart and you think of the word Dora, that would help you remember domain and range, like Dora the Explorer. Because the do part would remind you that the domain are your x values. And the raw part would remind you of the word range, which are your y values. So in this case, they're asking for the x values. And that would be these numbers here. Now they do write them in order from least to greatest. So if you think about it, negative 2 would be first. And then they would have 0 next. 1 and then 2. So we're looking for an answer that looks like this. So negative 2, 0, 1, 2, here we go. The answer choice here would be B. Now had they wanted range, then we would have gone with these numbers. Okay. So just look for those keywords. Domain are your x values, range are your y values. And number 7 wants to know what is the 0 of 5x plus 20. Now this is not a quadratic. If you graph this, you will see a linear function, 5x plus 20. So a 0 would mean, kind of similar to a quadratic, a 0 would be where it crosses the x-axis. And so right here at negative 1, 2, 3, 4, at negative 4 is my 0. I can also find that, just to make sure, do a menu 6, 1, click and drag, and there it is negative 4. They might write it as a coordinate or they might just write negative 4. Okay, those are two answer choices. So let's see what we're looking at here. So it looks like they just put negative 4 and so that's the answer choice I want to go with. Now on your paper you might have some weird answer choices that don't match this question. You do want to go ahead and fix that so just kind of exit, you know, x out those wrong answers and write these answer choices on the side and then, of course, the answer is D. And you might even draw a graph like this. And let's draw a picture of what we saw. We saw a line going upward like that. And then you might want to put a little dot right here where we found our 0, which was at negative 4, 0. And then even put menu 6, 1. Okay. So when you go back and study, you kind of know how you solve this question. All right, so let's look at question number eight next. Question number eight, I'm going to go ahead and highlight. This is a good question for a highlighter, a lot of words. Mr. Newman bought eight tickets to a chili supper for a total of $30. He bought a combination of adult tickets for $5 each and child tickets for $3 each. Which system of equations below will determine the number of child tickets C and the number of adult tickets A that he bought? So first thing I would be looking for are totals because if this is a system, which they did say, that means I need two equations or more. 
So I'm going to start looking for some totals. There's a total here that says that the total equals to 30. And if you look at what equals to 30, it says Mr. Newman bought eight tickets to a chili supper for a total of $30. So remember, he bought adult tickets plus ch children tickets. And we can let an A represent adult, and then the C represent the child. Now another total that they gave us, oh, I'm sorry, we also have to involve the actual prices. So adult tickets, if you go back and look, they are $5 each. And then your children tickets are $3 each. That's what will equal to $30, because this is money. So I definitely want to include the prices of each. Okay, still make the same mistake I just almost made. Now the other total is in the first sentence. It says here that he bought a total of eight tickets. This is what I was looking for. So something's got to equal to 8. Well, the number of tickets equals to 8. So that means adult plus children equals to 8 tickets total. So now we've got to look at the answer choices, see if we can find something similar. Sometimes you do have to solve for A or solve for C in order to find maybe one of the equations. So let's look around, see if we can find something similar. It looks like this one here has 5A plus 3C equals 30. This one did not, so let's go ahead and X this one out. Uh, this one has 5A plus 3C equals 30. It also has the A plus C equals 8. Okay. So, this one here is incorrect. So now we're down to these two choices. Now, this A equals 8 minus C, that is actually correct as well. Because if I were to solve for A, I could subtract C from both sides. So it looks like we have a dilemma here. We've got two answer choices that actually would work, which would be B, A equals 8 minus C would be this equation, just solved for A. 5A plus 3C equals 30 is the second equation. So it looks like could be both of those answers. I'm going to go and circle both. I'll we'll have to fix that for next year because I would say it's B and C and I hope you guys agree with me. So moving right along, we'll have to fix that for next year. I need to make a little notation, put a little star by that. All right, now question number nine says, what is the M, the slope of the line that contains the points 2, 0, 3, 0, 3, and 4, negative 3? So they want the slope, the keyword being slope, which is the M. So we could spreadsheet this problem. We could also graph each one of these points and count the rising runs. We'll go ahead and graph. Let's put the 2, 0, then 0, 3, 1, 2, 3. Put the 4, negative 3, 1, 2, 3. You would then connect them with a straight line. And then we, what we can do is we can count the rise and the run. So remember that slope is rise over run. So let's go ahead and do the rise and run. So I'm going to use these two points right here. Do the rise and run. Uh, looks like the rise would be. Oh, hold on here. Back up. Let's see if that's going to write for me. There we go. So we're going to do the rise and run. So it looks like it. R oh, I'm going to do it again. Sorry, guys. Technical difficulties seems to happen every time I use those little arrows. There we go. 
So I'm going to do then the rise and run one more time. <laughs> so the rise here would be, it went up one, two, three is what I'm counting. So my rise would be three. My run would be one, two. So I'm counting two as my run. Now notice this, if you think of slope guy, which you should probably draw over here on the side, I do want to make sure I get the sign right. So this line looks like this part of slope guy, this line right here, which is a negative slope. This would be undefined, this would be zero. So it is a negative three over two. Okay, now notice they do have positive three over two and that's what they expect you to pick. That's called the distractor answer. But the correct answer should be negative three over two, which is right here, so D. Now you could also spreadsheet those points. So uh, those of you who like using spreadsheet, you could do that as well. You always want to clear everything out before you use spreadsheet. You always want to put a heading, so X, Y, that's good enough heading, and then input the points, 2, 0, 0, 3, and I believe the last one was 4, negative 3, so 4, negative 3. If you want a linear function, remember the M is your slope, so you can go straight to that. You could even graph if you wanted. Do a little quick graph just to make sure it is linear. It's always good to check. It might be quadratic or exponential. But there you go. And then from here you could get the equation. Go to analyze, which is four. Go to six for regression. And go to the first one. Mx plus b. Remember the m is your slope. And so there's your slope right there. Negative 1.5 would be the m. The b would be 3. So if you think about it, negative 3 halves, if we go to the scratch pad and take negative 3 and divide it by the 2 and hit control enter to get a decimal out of that, it's the same thing as negative 3 over 2. So we got the right answer. And again, it's always good to do it by hand and then always double check using your calculator. All right, so let's look at question number, oh, it looks like I skipped number eight. Oh, no, we did number eight, never mind. Here we go, number 10. So number 10 says if three times two x minus seven equals 10 x plus six x plus four, what is x equal? So this is a simple uh, menu three one type of problem. I would definitely want you to use menu 3.1 on this. So go to the first app, clear everything out. You have, if you look at what you've got, you've got one equation and you've got one variable in there which happens to be the x. And so if you go to menu 3.1 and use n solve, you'll be able to solve this problem. So you've got three parentheses 2x plus 7 equals 10x plus 6 times x plus 4. So parentheses x plus 4. Don't forget that in this, when you use n solve, you just have to remember to put the comma and the variable that's in the equation, which happens to be an x, and then press enter. And so I'm getting a negative 0 0.3 as my final result. So negative 0 0.3. On your answer document, this would be a gridable, gridable, so make sure you put the negative and then just bubble in 0 0.3. All right, so let's look at number 11 next. What you can do for 11 is define. You can also uh, use your exponent formulas. 
to simplify a to the third b to the negative five over a to the negative five b to the third. Express your answer using only positive exponents. Okay, so then that means that has a negative exponent that's out. That's positive, positive. Okay, all the rest are all all okay. So now what we want to do is we can go ahead and use define, which is a uh, menu one one. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to define the variables in this expression. So we're going to define the a first. We'll say a equals three three five seven nine. Use these numbers for define. And then the other thing we would want to define is the b. And we can use a 5 for b. So I only see two variables, an a and a b. So all we have to do now, and again, you do use the first app for this. You want to clear everything out, make sure there's no problems there. And then menu 1-1. One, one. Type in the a equals 3, press enter. Do menu 1-1 one, one again. This time put b equals 5, press enter. And then at this point, what we need to do is see what this expression will give us. So I'm going to do control divide, and I'm going to type in a to the third, b to the fifth, times. I'm going to go ahead and put the time symbol in case I need that. Actually, I need to move forward and then put my time symbol. And then b raised to the fifth. Make sure that's a, oh, it's a negative 5. Sorry about that. Going a little too fast here. And then at the bottom, it's a to the negative 5th, b to the 3rd. So a raised to the negative 5th. Move forward, put your time symbol, and then b to the 3rd, I believe. Yes, b to the 3rd. So b raised to the 3rd. All right, so this is the answer that we need to jot down because this is what we're going to be looking for. So it's 6, 6, oh no, 6, 5, 6, 1. Sorry about that. 6, 5, 6, 1 over 3, 9, 0, 6, 2, 5. So this is a fraction that this will equal to when we plugged in a 3 for the A and a 5 for the B. So now what we want to do is see which one of these answer choices will give us this. And that would be our equivalent expression. So notice if we simplify this, would it, would it simplify to B? Let's check. So would it be B squared over A squared? Nope. Would it be b to the eighth over a to the eighth? Almost seems to be upside down. Numbers look a little similar, but that's wrong. So it's not b, it's not c. And if you notice, this is a uh, upside down right here. They put the a to the a, so it has to be d. But again, we just want to double check just to make sure. So a raised to the a, b to the a. And there you go. Perfect. The answer choice is d. And why? Because it gave you the same answer that you got when you input the problem. So the problem and the answer do give you the same number, which happens to be this number right here. So define is pretty good to use with those types of problems. Hope you enjoyed this uh, video for Algebra 1 review, uh, part one of your uh, review for your final exam. Good luck. I know that Friday they begin the exam, so I wish everybody luck. And I'll be making another video for part two. Have a good day.